September 3. The Family of Saul. The Family of Saul. Jeiel, the father of Gibeon, lived in the town of Gibeon. His wife's name was Maekah, and his oldest son was named Abdon. Jeiel's other sons were Zur, Kish, Baal, Ner, Nadab, Gedor, Ahio, Zechariah, and Mikloth, who was the father of Shimeon. All these families lived near each other in Jerusalem. Ner was the father of Kish. Kish was the father of Saul. Saul was the father of Jonathan, Melchishua, Abinadab, and Eshbaal. Jonathan was the father of Mirab Baal. Mirab Baal was the father of Micah. Micah was the father of Pithon, Melech, Teria, and Ahaz. Ahaz was the father of Jada. Jada was the father of Elameth, Asmaveth, and Zimri. Zimri was the father of Moza. Moza was the father of Binia. Binia was the father of Rephaiah. Rephaiah was the father of Eliasa. Eliasa was the father of Azel. Azel had six sons, Ezrakim, Bakrau, Ishmael, Sheraiah, Obadiah, and Hanan. These were the sons of Azel. Azel's brother Eshek had three sons. The first was Ulam, the second was Jeush, and the third was Eliphalet. Ulam's sons were all mighty warriors and expert archers. They had many sons and grandsons, 150 in all. All these were descendants of Benjamin. So all Israel was listed in the genealogical records in the book of the kings of Israel. Nebuchadnezzar's Dream About a Tree King Nebuchadnezzar sent this message to the people of every race and nation and language throughout the world. Peace and prosperity to you. I want you all to know about the miraculous signs and wonders the Most High God has performed for me. How great are his signs, how powerful his wonders. His kingdom will last forever, his rule through all generations. I, Nebuchadnezzar, was living in my palace in comfort and prosperity. But one night I had a dream that frightened me. I saw visions that terrified me as I lay in my bed. So I issued an order calling in all the wise men of Babylon so they could tell me what my dream meant. When all the magicians, enchanters, astrologers, and fortune tellers came in, I told them the dream, but they could not tell me what it meant. At last, Daniel came in before me, and I told him the dream. He was named Belteshazzar after my God, and the spirit of the holy gods is in him. I said to him, Belteshazzar, chief of the magicians, I know that the spirit of the holy gods is in you, and that no mystery is too great for you to solve. Now tell me what my dream means. While I was lying in my bed, this is what I dreamed. I saw a large tree in the middle of the earth. The tree grew very tall and strong, reaching high into the heavens for all the world to see. It had fresh green leaves, and it was loaded with fruit for all to eat. Wild animals lived in its shade, and birds nested in its branches. All the world was fed from this tree. Then, as I lay there dreaming, I saw a messenger, a holy one, coming down from heaven. The messenger shouted, Cut down the tree and lop off its branches. Shake off its leaves and scatter its fruit. Chase the wild animals from its shade and the birds from its branches. But leave the stump and the roots in the ground, bound with a band of iron and bronze and surrounded by tender grass. Now let him be drenched with the dew of heaven, and let him live with the wild animals among the plants of the field. For seven periods of time, let him have the mind of a wild animal instead of the mind of a human. For this has been decreed by the messengers, it is commanded by the holy ones, so that everyone may know that the Most High rules over the kingdoms of the world. He gives them to anyone he chooses, even to the lowliest of people. Belteshazzar, that was the dream that I, King Nebuchadnezzar, had. Now tell me what it means, for none of the wise men of my kingdom can do so. But you can tell me, because the spirit of the holy gods is in you. Daniel explains the dream. Upon hearing this, Daniel, also known as Belteshazzar, was overcome for a time, frightened by the meaning of the dream. Then the king said to him, Belteshazzar, don't be alarmed by the dream and what it means. Belteshazzar replied, I wish the events foreshadowed in this dream would happen to your enemies, my lord, and not to you. The tree you saw was growing very tall and strong, reaching high into the heavens for all the world to see. 
It had fresh green leaves and was loaded with fruit for all to eat. Wild animals lived in its shade, and birds nested in its branches. That tree, your majesty, is you. For you have grown strong and great. Your greatness reaches up to heaven, and your rule to the ends of the earth. Then you saw a messenger, a holy one, coming down from heaven, and saying, Cut down the tree and destroy it, but leave the stump and the roots in the ground, bound with a band of iron and bronze, and surrounded by tender grass. Let him be drenched with the dew of heaven. Let him live with the animals of the field for seven periods of time. This is what the dream means, your majesty, and what the Most High has declared will happen to my lord the king. You will be driven from human society, and you will live in the fields with the wild animals. You will eat grass like a cow, and you will be drenched with the dew of heaven. Seven periods of time will pass while you live this way, until you learn that the Most High rules over the kingdoms of the world and gives them to anyone he chooses. But the stump and roots of the tree were left in the ground. This means that you will receive your kingdom back again when you have learned that heaven rules. King Nebuchadnezzar, please accept my advice. Stop sinning and do what is right. Break from your wicked past and be merciful to the poor. Perhaps then you will continue to prosper. The Dream's Fulfillment But all these things did happen to King Nebuchadnezzar. Twelve months later, He was taking a walk on the flat roof of the royal palace in Babylon. As he looked out across the city, he said, Look at this great city of Babylon. By my own mighty power, I have built this beautiful city as my royal residence to display my majestic splendor. While these words were still in his mouth, a voice called down from heaven, O King Nebuchadnezzar, this message is for you. You are no longer ruler of this kingdom. You will be driven from human society. You will live in the fields with the wild animals, and you will eat grass like a cow. Seven periods of time will pass while you live this way, until you learn that the Most High rules over the kingdoms of the world and gives them to anyone he chooses. That same hour, the judgment was fulfilled, and Nebuchadnezzar was driven from human society. He ate grass like a cow, and he was drenched with the dew of heaven. He lived this way until his hair was as long as eagle's feathers, and his nails were like bird's claws. Nebuchadnezzar praises God. After this time had passed, I, Nebuchadnezzar, looked up to heaven. My sanity returned, and I praised and worshipped the Most High, and honored the one who lives forever. His rule is everlasting, and his kingdom is eternal. All the people of the earth are nothing compared to him. He does as he pleases among the angels of heaven and among the people of the earth. No one can stop him or say to him, What do you mean by doing these things? When my sanity returned to me, so did my honor and glory and kingdom. My advisors and nobles sought me out, and I was restored as head of my kingdom, with even greater honor than before. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and glorify and honor the King of heaven. All his acts are just and true, and he is able to humble the proud. The New Temple Area On April 28, During the twenty-fifth year of our captivity, fourteen years after the fall of Jerusalem, the Lord took hold of me. In a vision from God, He took me to the land of Israel and set me down on a very high mountain. From there I could see toward the south what appeared to be a city. As He brought me nearer, I saw a man whose face shone like bronze standing beside a gateway entrance. He was holding in his hand a linen measuring cord and a measuring rod. He said to me, Son of man, watch and listen. Pay close attention to everything I show you. You have been brought here so I can show you many things. Then you will return to the people of Israel and tell them everything you have seen. The East Gateway I could see a wall completely surrounding the temple area. The man took a measuring rod that was ten and a half feet long and measured the wall, and the wall was ten and a half feet thick and ten and a half feet high. Then he went over to the eastern gateway. He climbed the steps and measured the threshold of the gateway. It was ten and a half feet front to back. 
There were guard alcoves on each side built into the gateway passage. Each of these alcoves was ten and a half feet square, with a distance between them of eight and three quarter feet along the passage wall. The gateway's inner threshold, which led to the entry room at the inner end of the gateway passage, was ten and a half feet front to back. He also measured the entry room of the gateway. It was fourteen feet across, with supporting columns three and a half feet thick. This entry room was at the inner end of the gateway structure, facing toward the temple. There were three guard alcoves on each side of the gateway passage. Each had the same measurements, and the dividing walls separating them were also identical. The man measured the gateway entrance, which was seventeen and a half feet wide at the opening and twenty-two and three-quarter feet wide in the gateway passage. In front of each of the guard alcoves was a twenty-one-inch curb. The alcoves themselves were ten and a half feet on each side. Then he measured the entire width of the gateway, measuring the distance between the back walls of facing guard alcoves. This distance was forty-three and three-quarter feet. He measured the dividing walls all along the inside of the gateway up to the entry room of the gateway. This distance was one hundred and five feet. The full length of the gateway passage was eighty-seven and a half feet from one end to the other. There were recessed windows that narrowed inward through the walls of the guard alcoves and their dividing walls. There were also windows in the entry room. The surfaces of the dividing walls were decorated with carved palm trees. The outer courtyard. Then the man brought me through the gateway into the outer courtyard of the temple. A stone pavement ran along the walls of the courtyard, and thirty rooms were built against the walls, opening onto the pavement. This pavement flanked the gates and extended out from the walls into the courtyard, the same distance as the gateway entrance. This was the lower pavement. Then the man measured across the temple's outer courtyard between the outer and inner gateways. The distance was one hundred and seventy-five feet. The north gateway. The man measured the gateway on the north, just like the one on the east. Here too, there were three guard alcoves on each side, with dividing walls and an entry room. All the measurements matched those of the east gateway. The gateway passage was eighty-seven and one half feet long, and forty-three and three quarter feet wide between the back walls of facing guard alcoves. The windows, the entry room, and the palm tree decorations were identical to those in the east gateway. There were seven steps leading up to the gateway entrance, and the entry room was at the inner end of the gateway passage. Here, on the north side, just as on the east, there was another gateway leading to the temple's inner courtyard, directly opposite this outer gateway. The distance between the two gateways was one hundred and seventy-five feet. The south gateway. Then the man took me around to the south gateway and measured its various parts, and they were exactly the same as in the others. It had windows along the walls as the others did, and there was an entry room where the gateway passage opened into the outer courtyard. And like the others, the gateway passage was eighty-seven and a half feet long and forty-three and three-quarter feet wide between the back walls of facing guard alcoves. This gateway also had a stairway of seven steps leading up to it, and an entry room at the inner end, and palm tree decorations along the dividing walls. And here again, directly opposite the outer gateway, was another gateway that led into the inner courtyard. The distance between the two gateways was one hundred and seventy-five feet. Gateways to the inner courtyard. Then the man took me to the south gateway leading into the inner courtyard. He measured it. And it had the same measurements as the other gateways. Its guard alcoves, dividing walls, and entry room were the same size as those in the others. It also had windows along its walls and in the entry room. And like the others, the gateway passage was eighty-seven and a half feet long and forty-three and three-quarter feet wide. The entry rooms of the gateways leading into the inner courtyard were fourteen feet across and forty-three and three-quarter feet wide. The entry room to the south gateway faced into the outer courtyard. It had palm tree decorations on its columns, and there were eight steps leading to its entrance.
Then he took me to the east gateway leading to the inner courtyard. He measured it, and it had the same measurements as the other gateways. Its guard alcoves, dividing walls, and entry room were the same size as those of the others. And there were windows along the walls and in the entry room. The gateway passage measured 87 and a half feet long and 43 and three quarter feet wide. Its entry room faced into the outer courtyard. It had palm tree decorations on its columns, and there were eight steps leading to its entrance. Then he took me around to the north gateway leading to the inner courtyard. He measured it, and it had the same measurements as the other gateways. The guard alcoves, dividing walls, and entry room of this gateway had the same measurements as in the others and the same window arrangements. The gateway passage measured 87 and a half feet long and 43 and three quarter feet wide. Its entry room faced into the outer courtyard and it had palm tree decorations on the columns. There were eight steps leading to its entrance.